Hey guys, welcome back to another Kivy tutorial. So in today's video, we're going to be going through something called float layout. Now float layout is a really nice layout as it's meant kind of for uh, better dynamically sized screens and, and widgets and layouts and whatnot. So the grid layout was nice, but there was a few issues with that in terms of resizability and things might overlap. And I'm sure you guys might have found them if you were playing with them. So float layout is really a better layout to use. Um, if you're going to be making this, it's going to run on all different kind of operating systems, especially like phones uh, and like Android apps and iPhone apps and whatnot. Float layout is probably a bit better to use. So you can see I've actually deleted everything essentially other than kind of the main aspect of our program. They have my KV files now empty and we're just going to get, we're going to start right from the beginning and just kind of mess around with float layout. So what we need to do when we use float layout is obviously import that. So we'll do kv.uix.floatlayout and then import float layout. Now instead of creating a class and doing all that that we did last time, let's just return a new float layout. Uh, and then that's actually all we need to do from within our Python script. And we can move over to our KV file, which will be what we're working with for the rest of the video. So you can see that, right, we created a new float layout and that's what we're returning. Now, if you remember in the last videos, I'd had something like this, like widgets, okay? Now, this is actually what's known as a parent tag. Now, I didn't mention that in the last video, but this is what it's known as. And this is the, the, uh, the, the parent to whatever any of these properties are going to be down here, right? So, for example, when we assigned maybe the size to widgets, that means that the entire, all, like all of those widgets got resized to fit inside of uh, our container or anything that we put inside of here, like a button uh, was applied and was added to our widgets uh, class, right? So what we're going to do here is instead of using widgets, we can use the, like the actual widget that we want to, uh, to use or to add to or whatnot. So in this case, I can literally just type float layout. And this means now that whenever I create anything in here, it will apply to not only this float layout, but any float layout that I create in this program. So if for some reason I had like a float layout inside of a float layout, um, everything in that float layout would uh, have the same properties as what's gonna be in this tag. And you guys will see that in just a second. So what I'm gonna do in here, I'm gonna create two buttons. We'll do this really basically. I'm just gonna make one button that says uh, tech with, and then if you guys can guess what the other button is gonna say, if you did not guess, it is gonna say, Tim. All right. So tech with and then Tim. Now this is great, but I want to show you what else we can do. So just like I created this kind of parent tag for a float layout, I can create a parent tag for something like a button. So you'll see, you guys will see more how this works if you're confused in just a second. So button. And what I'm going to do in here is I'm going to do something like font hyphen size, uh, and we'll just do 40 and I'll do color. And this will be the text color and color is actually in something called RGB a. Yeah, RGBA. So red, green, blue, alpha. Now, what this means is that your text properties, I believe, have to be between the value of negative one and one. Someone correct me if I'm wrong on that, but I believe it's negative one and one or zero and one. Pretty sure negative one and one, though. So if I want to create, uh, like, I don't know what this text is going to give me, you'd have to look it up to figure out what these colors actually are. I'm just going to do 0 0.3, 0 0.6, uh, and 0 0.7, and then I'll just put one as my alpha value because I want this to actually show up. Uh, now, alpha is a little bit different than opacity, but I, I'm not going to talk about the differences right now, okay? So anyways, this is what we do. Now, since we've defined these two properties here in button, what this means is since this is the parent tag for button, all other buttons will have these properties. So for example, this, this button will have a font size of 40 and a color of this, and this button will have that as well. If I added any other buttons, they would as well gain those properties and have access to those properties. Okay, so let's run this now. And let's just see what we're actually getting on the screen. Okay, so we're getting a button that fills the entire screen. You can see obviously it has a different color. Now, this is obviously not ideal, but this is working in terms of what we did. So let's close this and let's talk about now how we can actually change the position and the size of these buttons. So when we're using float layout, uh, the nice thing about it is it allows us to obviously use dynamic placement. So rather than doing something like we might've done in previous videos, we do like pause and then we give it an X, Y. So maybe like 40, 50, we can do that, but what we should do is use something called position underscore hint. Now what this means is it's kind of, it's funny how the way they actually uh, worded it here, hinting at what the position will be. So this has uh, six, what do you call it, keys then. And you notice that I put these because it's actually, it's a dictionary. It has the key X, Y, not width and height. It has top, uh, bottom, so 
bottom. And then it has left and right as well. Okay, so left and right like so. Okay, so X, Y, top, bottom, left, right. Now, these kind of don't work how you might assume. You might think you put like an actual number here, like X colon, and it's like 50. Um, no, uh, all of these actually take values between zero and one. And you can kind of think of it as like the degree of maybe X or the degree of Y or how much topness you have or how much bottomness you have. Um, and we'll talk about how we do this, but let's actually, let's get rid of a few of these tags. I just want to use X and top for right now. So we'll do X and we'll just retype top. And it's better just to show an example. So for X, uh, again, between zero and one. So let's think about it for a second. If I wanted to move my button to the right and this value is between zero and one, what is the value I'd probably use to move it, uh, right? Well, if we know, and I don't know if I've actually talked about it, the coordinate system in Kivi starts at the bottom left-hand corner of the screen, which means that zero, zero is the bottom left. So this is different from a lot of programming languages where the uh, zero, zero is the top left-hand corner, right? So if I want to move to the right and zero is the left, then I would have to add to the X. So I'm going to do 0 0.5 here, which stands for 50% X, which means that I'm going to move 50% to the right, which should essentially have me. So I'm the bottom left of my button is in the middle of the screen. Okay. So now for top. So I want this to be at the very top. So again, if we're seeing zero zero is at the bottom, what would we do to make it go up to the top? Well, we need to add to that Y value. So I'm going to put one here. Uh, and the reason this is going to work is because the way that the top property works is it actually references the, um, what do you call it? The top left of our object. Because for example, if I had made this one, you would think that the bottom left hand corner of our button would go above the screen. That means we wouldn't be able to see the button, right? But no, the way top works is it references the top of our button, which is actually nice, which allows us just to do one to make it go up to the top of the screen. So let's just mess with this for now. Let's run this. Um, and oh, I forgot to do this one second. So the reason we're still seeing both of them is because I haven't defined a size for our buttons. And because I didn't define a size, it means they just take up the entire container. So what we need to do is we need to define a size. Now, a similar thing for size, uh, we can do something called si size pause. Wow. Okay. Size hint. I don't know what I just typed there. Just completely ignore that size underscore hint. And then here uh, we're going to have not a dictionary. We're going to have two values between zero and one, which are going to stand for uh, the width and the height. And again, this is going to be uh, like relative, so like a percentage. So if I wanted them to be, for example, 0.3 so 30% width and let's say 50% height this is what I would do and let's just run this and see if we actually if I did this correctly and now you can see that um, indeed we're getting a well width that's 0 0.3 so 30% of whatever the container it's in um, so these buttons beside each other would take up 60% of this entire float layout hope that makes sense uh, and you can see that now our button tech width has moved to start at 50% of uh, the X, right? And then at the top, it's it's all the way at the top. So now just notice right away that if I start uh, resizing this window, that everything is moving and changing sizes as well. And you'll notice that even though the text is getting cut off because of the font size, uh, none of these buttons are staying exactly where they are. They're not overlapping. And this is why we want to use something like a float layout. Okay, so we can do stuff like that. So you already can see the major advantage to it. So this is how you do the size hint, right? So the percentages, um, position hint, same thing. Obviously, we can mess with position hint for this other button. But what I want to do is talk about how we can actually change properties of the button based on a state. So our button has, I believe, three states. And I think one of the states is uh, like normal. So like meaning it's just it's just there, like it's not being clicked. Um, and I believe I have to look actually at the other one. The other state would be down uh, one of them. I think there's another one which is like hover or click or whatnot. So down is going to mean that we're clicking on the button. So if we wanted to, for example, change the text of this button when we're clicking on it, well, what we can actually do is uh, we can do that from within here. So let's do it with this Tim button. And let's say text is Tim if Okay, we're gonna say if and then what I actually need to do is sorry set an ID here. So I'm gonna say ID BTN. Okay, and I'm gonna say if BTN dot state equals equals normal. Okay, and then what I'm going to say is I'm gonna say else and then I'll define the text I want it to be in this case, I'm gonna say down. Okay. Uh, so if it is not in the normal state, it's in any other state, we're gonna change the text to down. So now watch what happens. So Tim button right here. Okay, so I'm hovering 
nothing is happening. Watch what happens when I click. You can see that I'm holding down the mouse, by the way, right now. It goes to down. It might be hard to see because of the color, but it does indeed change. Now, we can use this kind of property to do anything we want. For example, I can say, let's do background color. Okay. And this is going to be like 0 0.3, um, 0 0.4, 0. I think I can do 0.4, actually. Let's try that. 0 0.5, 1. If btn.state um, equals equals normal. Okay. If I type normal correctly. So now let's watch what happens. Uh, EOF will parsing unexpected. Okay. Maybe we can't do that unless I have to do something like this, like these brackets. Let's see. No. Okay. So we actually can't do that, but <laughs> you see what I mean in terms of the text, how we can change that property. So maybe color is a bit different. We have to do that from inside of our, uh, what do you call it? Our actual logic. But if I change the background color, you can see that our background color is indeed changing. And obviously when I click on it now, it's a little easier to see that it says down. So ignore what I just did, but essentially you guys get the point. Now I'll show you quickly how we can, we'll just mess around with this a bit, kind of show exactly how all this works. So for example, if we wanted to make our, um, and you know what, let's do it with this one. So let's do pause underscore hint. Okay. And we'll just do Y. And let's give this a Y of like, let's say 30%. Okay. And let's just see what this does now. So now we give this a Y of 30%. And you can see that now Tim has moved up on the screen uh, 30%. Now notice that the Y, right? Again, it's working from the bottom left. So we're going to draw here 30% where some people might say, well, this looks like we're drawing from the top left or whatnot. Okay. So just notice how that works. So essentially this is a float layout. You can see how nice we can resize things and kind of play with them. They just dynamically change for us. And uh, yeah. So in the next video where I think I'm going to go through uh, getting touch input, we'll mess with float layout a bit more, make like a nicer looking GUI. But for, for now, that's going to be it. If you guys enjoyed the video, please make sure you left a like and subscribe and I'll see you again in another video.